Hey there folks, my name is Peter and I have a battery problem. Well, it's not exactly a problem per se, but I currently exist within four different battery ecosystems. So first and foremost, we have Milwaukee M12. These days, by default, I'm always looking for M12 over anything else. I used to be really big into Ryobi, but their circular saw and impact driver let me down one too many times, and I said, you know what? I'm done buying Ryobi, unless it's like a specialty tool, like a chemical spray or something that I don't need Milwaukee for. I'm going Milwaukee M12. Next is Ryobi 40 volt. I first got introduced to this ecosystem when I bought their chainsaw, which I actually really like, although it does leak the, the bar and chain oil, so be careful. Uh, and actually, all of their saws seem to leak bar and chain oil, so some sort of design defect there. But nonetheless, I also have the weed whacker, and the blower for this 40 volt battery. Next we have Ryobi 18 volt. I've still got a bunch of tools that use this. Different pin nailers, brad nailers, caulk gun, chemical sprayer. So I have to keep them around. Finally, we have Milwaukee M18. So if the tool that I'm looking for doesn't come in an M12 or I need the M18 power, like for example, the circular saw was the first M18 tool that I ever bought. But what is the point of today's video? The point of today's video is when I moved into this new home, I never took the time to organize all of my batteries and chargers such that they were easy to access. I just stuffed everything into a cabinet, which did have an outlet in there, so I was able to charge stuff, but it's not well organized. It takes two hands to get the batteries on and off because they're not uh, adhered to the cabinet itself, uh, and I'm just kind of over it. I'm, I'm ready to make that change today. So I've got this piece of three quarter inch sanded plywood. It's actually a scrap piece, but it's gonna work perfectly for what we're trying to accomplish because it fits in the box very nicely. But before I can actually explain how we're gonna make use of this and start to work on it, you know, I always appreciate shop furniture projects more when I finish them. So I've got the paint, which will match the wall that this is ultimately gonna go on, and, and we're gonna paint it in three, two, one. All right, folks, and so just like that, we've got our backing piece painted, same color that will match the wall. Now, while this was drying, I went over to the table saw and I cut a bunch of these one inch strips. Now, these aren't exactly long enough, but I don't actually need this to be one solid piece. There's nothing structural about this. What I am gonna do, however, is basically create a frame, an inner frame, if you will, on the back portion of this piece so that it will stand off a little bit from the wall. Now that's gonna serve two purposes. One, cable management, and two, well, the second one's a bit of a surprise, so you'll see at the end. What I'm thinking is that I'm gonna have basically two inches, two and a half inches maybe of clearance all the way around, and if I have a Maybe a pin nail and some glue to get these on there. I think that should be sufficient. This one here, one goes there. Perfect. Now, I mentioned that the first part of the frame was to wire concealment. The second part, LEDs. None of these <laughs> shop furniture projects would be complete if we didn't add some light to them. So I think it could be cool, you know, if we run it along this, uh, the channel here on the outside. Success. So we're gonna mount our switch for the LEDs. This is actually very similar to what we did for the NASCAR diecast display stand project. But I'm thinking like maybe a clip there, we'll do some Velcro on the bottom of this. And then this cable management, we're gonna sort of just hand wave for the moment because at the end, we're gonna have a lot of cables back here. And I don't know if I wanna do it permanently, like with these clips or what, but we'll see. So I've got this little attachment on my Milwaukee drill. It magnetizes any drill bit. Pretty cool. You know, originally I was gonna uh, do like a routed channel here, but you know, it's really just not necessary. Whoa! Obviously you can't get the effect because there's no wall behind us here, but just imagine that if this is mounted on the wall, it's gonna light up the whole thing and I think it'll look pretty cool. So this thing is gonna sit four inches away from our outlet and then our stud location is eight and five eighths away from our outlet. So we are going to drill pilot hole at four and five eighths. So that's where the first screw will go and that's where the second screw will go. I've been reading Adam Savage's book lately and he has a whole chapter in there about addressing the workpiece. And he talks specifically about clamping things down and you know, basically taking nothing for granted when you're doing stuff like this. So I'm trying to get better about making use of my clamps even for stuff where I wouldn't necessarily think to use them. So this is how I'm thinking about having it all set up. I just want to lay everything out here so I know my sort of general spacing. You know, for the 40 volts, we have to be able to pull them out all the way. 
so that they don't conflict with these chargers. Power cord goes all the way on the right here because this is where we have our opening. So all the cords will feed out, all the cords will be behind the board and then the plug in here. And then we've got this McGaffer. This is actually a 3D printed Ryobi battery holder. So we'll mount this down at the end and then you can't really see it, but we've got a little bit of room for expansion right here. I think that the Milwaukee, it's okay, right? This is gonna pull out this way. I wish I had another M18 charger, but I don't. And then these Ryobis come straight up. So there may very well be multiple ways of doing this, but the way that I've always done, put a piece of painter's tape over our mounting holes, then we're gonna mark a circle where we're gonna put the screw there. And then I've measured the distance that this hole is from either side as well as from the bottom, which is right here on our board. So now, if we put that dot over our mark, okay. Now we'll throw our screws in. There you go. So that first one's done, beautiful. And then, obviously if you wanna leave the tape there, you can, or you just pull it off and you're on to the next one. But now that we've got this one attached, let's get some cable clips for this cord. So let's repeat this process. I'm gonna do the Ryobi ones next, because this one I already practiced cutting the cord and soldering it a little bit. So I wanna do these ones, do a test, make sure everything works, and then we'll move on to the bigger ones. And now instead of using the tape again, all right, so now, these are all lined up and one-handed. We can take all the batteries out because they are firmly attached. Now, the stressful part is we have to cut all of the cabling. We're gonna drill a single hole. I have a little cover, like a rubber uh, grommet for this. So it will uh, protect the wires as they're running through. I'm gonna run them all the way down, re-solder everything. And then before we move on, We'll plug in and test each charger to make sure that we're, we're still good at each step of the way. So this is the location of our hole. This is the grommet, which will go over that hole. Three quarters should work. We may have to do some sanding, but. Well, good thing we got that right on the first try in terms of our sizing because the last time I used a spade bit and I got the sizing wrong, trying to enlarge that hole was a big pain in the butt. Now, I've already cut off one of our wires. So, let's see if we can stick it down in there. Let's cut the rest of these. I'm using my Snap-on flush cuts. I find that, especially for the stranded wire, it seems to work pretty well. There we go. Whew. I mean, is that freaking looking good or what? All right, so tw stripping 22 gauge wire is a giant pain, but I have it to where I want it. And I've opted not to solder these myself, but rather I'm using these solder connectors. So it's basically a piece of heat shrink with a little piece of solder uh, in the middle. And if you twist the wires ahead of time, which I'm struggling a little bit with this red wire, there we go. Then you run the solder over the wires. The same for the black wire. So that should be good. And then once we get those soldered, I've got this other piece of heat shrink that I'm gonna run over that. So with any luck, this should just work. So I've mentioned this in the past. Uh, the first snap-on tool that I ever bought actually, gets quite hot. Okay, now, before I run this other piece of heat shrink over and then move on to the rest of these, let's plug this in and make sure that it works. Well, I see the light on our charger. Throw a battery in there and make sure everything is good. I actually know for a fact this battery's dead. I just took it off my uh, vacuum. And there you go, it's charging. So, solder was successful. Let's get that other piece of heat shrink on there. I'll get the rest of these lined up and then I'll bring you back when we move on to the next set of chargers. So about an hour of soldering later, all three of our chargers are back up and running after we 
cut their cords and uh, I'm, uh, I'm getting really excited about this. So we're not quite at the point of being able to put this thing on the wall yet, but I just feel like I have this process down a little bit more, so I wanted to bring you all back one more time before I finish and get it on the wall. So the Milwaukee chargers are much easier to work with. Just a little bit of a, of a thicker wire, which has been really nice. At first, I, I didn't remember because obviously on the Ryobis, they're, they're color-coded, red and black. On this, there's no color coding, but I'm going based on this idea that we have sort of a soft sheathing here and a ribbed sheathing here. So I'm just going soft to soft, ribbed to ribbed. I'm just kind of making an initial connected of the stranded wire, getting them twisted around one another. And of course, you don't have to, you know, do the process that I'm doing. You, you could just solder these directly, but these connectors are really nice. You could definitely see when the solder melts. I'm trying not to be too direct with the heat. There it goes. So now the solder's melted. Let's actually let that cool down. Same thing, I'm just kind of running them in the middle and twisting. There it goes. Run our heat shrink over that. Then I have a final piece of heat shrink that I had put on before I started this that will go over both sets of wires. You know, it's definitely a fair bit of work for some, what is effectively just cable management, but I kind of like it. Before I get this mounted, I just want to bring you all behind and you could see how I did the cable management. Unfortunately, I ran out of the wire loom uh, for the third one, which is the Ryobi 40 volt. Uh, but otherwise, I think it's gonna work quite nicely because none of these looms are thicker than our piece here at the top. And that's again why we wanted to frame this. One was cord management and then obviously the second one was the lights, but the cable management is the, the more important of the two. So I think it's ready for the wall. Well folks, the wall of charge is complete. Uh, this project took basically two full days. I didn't work on it straight through, but a lot of work doing all that soldering. Obviously it got a lot easier with the Milwaukee and the Ryobi 40 volt. Those Ryobi 18 volts were a giant, giant pain. But uh, we got everything charging. The back is all lit up. And uh, you know, I'm not sure what value the lights really add because there's so little space for the light to kind of seep out. But you know, you can never have too much backlighting. So let me know what you think about this project. What would you have done differently? Will you try something like this yourselves? Uh, be sure to like and subscribe, and I'll see you on the very next video.